स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया इन द प्रीवियस टू लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल वी हैव एक्चुअली डिस्कस्ड ऑन पेंट्स एंड वी एज आर्किटेक्ट्स नीड टू नो वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पेंट्स एंड वॉट इज टू बी रिकमेंडेड on what type of surface and how it is to be applied on to a surface so we will try to concentrate or maybe finish off today in today's lecture the paints chapter and we will try to cover the different types of paints the application of paints and we also need to know the special type of paints and again some nano applications so we have discussed in my previous module nano applications here it will be little different or particularly specific to that of paints now paints as i already told it gives a protective covering now we had also discussed on the defects of paints there we had found that paints there are three kinds of defects and those are one is improper surface treatment so surfaces are very important when we are looking into the application of paints but prior to that we need to know what type of paint is applicable where so let us come to the different kinds of paint we have interior applications that is the internal facades of the rooms house kitchen toilet chemical laboratory all what we can imagine so we are referring to the wall surfaces which are mostly plastered surface or concrete surface similarly we have such walls which is exterior beyond that we have wood surfaces and metal surfaces so you can see all these that from paints it has branched out but what is important to know is whenever whatever be the surface we have to apply the paint when the surface is dry that is point number 1 to be remembered all through because on new surface even if it is new even you think it is okay we can apply paint just after finishing plastering it won't help we will come to why other is if you put a primer coat an initial coat what will happen it will stick to the main surface or the substrate and a much amount will be absorbed by the material because other than metal we have concrete which can absorb which we have wood which is absorber so they will absorb some amount of the paint so cheaper it is better it is and at the same time this absorption will lead, lead to the adherence of the paint to the substrate so next coat on top of this primer coat will be less consumed you can put a better quality of paint on the as the second coat and obviously depending on the hiding capacity of the paint the subst the primer coat will be getting invisible with coats so this gives a durable protective coating so primer coating is very important on any surface being painted next point is for particularly walls we have wall putty that is a kind of sealant or a filler of all the kind of pores on the concrete surface or the plastered surface which is sand and cement it is usually cement based powder or hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose hpmc which is a gelatinous substance 
it is a glue like so this glue like sur substance is coated as a primary coat on top of the wall surfaces be it interior or exterior obviously if it is exterior you can have a very good damp protection against damp protection for from the rain water now coming to the interior paints you see a list of interior paints which are distempers and plastic emulsions as i have told you in my previous lecture base and vehicle these are the two things two major components forming the paint so now base has its pigment component and the basic or the principal component and vehicle has the binder component and its solvent or the thinner component and if i have missed out the binder is carrier the solvent or the thinner helps in carrying further so that depends on the that gives the workability and the binder actually oxidizes whereas the thinner evaporates so the binder forms an oxide coating along with the carrying the pigments along with it so distempers which are very basic coatings very basic paints will have which will be water based paint now here you see we have dry distemper synthetic distemper acrylic distemper we will come to that little later now for wood and metals you see it is different it is not the same paint as was being applied on interior wall surfaces it may be polyurethane and melamine on wood or it may be varnish now varnish is applied it which is very much colorless or it may have a very light tint but varnish is applied to make the wood grains visible this i think i have told in my previous lecture sometimes so sometimes we put need a coating which should help in revealing the inside at the same time for interior wall paints we want to hide the imperfections or hide the main material or the substrate so that is what varnish helps to achieve other than that we have the metal paints which are general purpose enamel paints synthetic enamel paints and the premier enamel paints so maybe you have seen many a uh, company containers where it is written what it is but now you need to train yourself that where it is applicable so you may see synthetic enamel paint or you may see dry distemper now whether it will be applied on top of a metal or it will be applied on top of a wall now i think you can segregate or identify coming to the exterior wall exterior wall is the jacket on top of it the paint is the jacket that is the protection so we have to be very particular on the water proofing characteristics of the paint also into the fineness of the material we use cement paint we use acrylic emuls emulsion we use textured plastic paints so cement paint helps in better adherence with the substrate now if you have a wall putty on top of it fine otherwise you can start with cement paint because wall putty sometimes is cement based powder applied as the initial coat or the primary coat so we can start directly with cement paint paint as the first coat so i think you can now segregate the material onto which which kind of paint will be applied 
let us move to the distempers. Distempers are the most commonly used paint which is water based, washable, durable, smooth. Now, you get dry distemper in the market, you add it with water and glue as the adhesive or the binder and you actually paint on the wall. Simple interior paint. Acrylic distemper, it has acrylic coke polymer formulation. It is also water based paint, provides smooth surface, you can clean it. In case of dry distemper, it may not be possible to clean every time because it will fade out. But acrylic distemper, you can clean it. Same with synthetic distemper or oil bound distemper. It is having additionally oil dry oil in it which dries out. But it helps in carrying the distemper in carrying the uh, base easily. So, it has higher coverage. The paint film gets hard with time and makes the surface easy to clean, which was again not possible for dry distempers. Let us see plastic emulsions. These are water based wa water based paint where tiny polymer particles are suspended or emulsified in water. It has higher coverage than ordinary paints. We had discussed 10 to 12 square meters per liter. Here it covers around 15 square meters per liter and the paint dries and the particles fuse together creating the film and the film of paint on the wall. If we look into the advantages, it is easy to apply because it is having the polymers in it, it is pulled very easily, it moves very easily and it is drying quickly with no order, washable, scratch resistant, anti fading. So, you can wash it without any fading because it has oil in it and it is being uh, it is polymer based and it is being carried by the base carried by the vehicle. Coming to the exterior paints, the cement based paints as I have told it is also a water based paint where cement is the base and it is weatherproof because of the presence of cement it prevents ultraviolet radiation. Best adheres when it is newly plastered wall obviously because it is having cement as one of the components in the plastered wall. You see two pictures here these are textured paint. So, these are water reducing paints these are thick paints sometimes or at times asbestos fibers were added, but presently those are not used. Coarse grains of sand, gypsum, metals are added with the binder. It is not necessarily very fine paint. It is a rough paint. You get this feel when you are touching it. So, you may have seen this. Try to observe buildings, public buildings where regular painting is not possible, where people regularly come, enter, go, but no one takes the maintenance, maintenance as a responsibility. They are applied with textured paints. They have become very popular 
because you can create a rough wall surface. The color is remaining. It provides better protection to the external wall. You can create a lot of par pattern with brush mark as the other picture shows. The other paint that can go is the acrylic paint. It is a fast drying paint made of pigment suspended in acrylic polymer emulsion. So, acrylic paints are again water soluble, but becomes water resistant when dry. So, they are washable. Washable means the nature washes it. Because of rain, it can get washed without without water being entering into the building. Now, coming to the wood and the metal paints. As I was discussing on varnish, it is a solution of resin or any resinous substance like amber, copal, shellac and it is dissolved in alcohol, turpentine or spirit and is applied. When it is applied, it does not create any color, it is colorless or transparent and the natural fibers or the grains are visible. We have polyurethane or melamine coating PU and melamine coating. This is again a synthetic hydrocarbon polymer which forms a film over the wood surface. It can protect the base material from any kind of corrosion, weathering, abrasion to some extent. But it laminates the wood and does not allow the wood to breathe. So, what happens? Wood being organic, it may have some internal defects. If you remember wet rots, dry rots. Some dry rots can happen from inside the wood and if it was breathable, maybe it could not have happened. But now because it is having an impervious coating, this polyurethane and melamine coating is restricting the wood to breathe and hence maybe a decay internally may happen. Metal surfaces, mostly it is enamel paints. Enamel paints are oil based paints, cheap, durable and waterproof. It is anti termite and hence cannot be applied on wooden surface. Sorry, it can be applied on wooden surface. So, when you apply enamel paint on wooden surface, you cannot see the wood surface. You can see the color of the enamel paint. So, the wood whether it is wood or any other material you cannot make out. Yes, from the profile you can make out maybe. So, the oil content allows the paint to be very smooth and it adheres to the surface much longer. Metals do not have any roughness if it is not having any kind of corrosion in it. So, enamel paint actually creates a coating, very smooth coating and it adheres or sticks to the metal surface quite for a long time. Now, coming to the major point which is application of paint. So, we could see there are many, many types of paints by name. Commercially, there are available in many other names as I told emulsion paint, silk emulsion, uh, uh, velvet, royal emulsion. So, that those are all how fine the paint is, how easily it is moving, how much of coverage it is providing. And 
other point is how durable they are. But when we are applying paint on plastered surfaces, as I told you, we have to remember we have to put the wall surface has to be dry and we have to put a layer of putty. But why do we need to have the surface dry? Because if water, if because still when it is wet, the hydrated cement is on the wet surface is active on the wet surface. So, the hydration of cement is still taking place and it may lead to flaking of the paint layer. Hence, paint is to be applied on dry surface. If it is a wet weather condition, then you have to add zinc sulphate prior to applying paints. Zinc sulphate will actually eat away the alkalis and then allow the paint allow the paint to adhere to the surface. Sometimes a layer of glue, if you cannot do a primer coat, you can apply a layer of glue with water mixed with water on the entire surface that will reduce the consumption of the paint to achieve economy. So, if you directly apply, if you do not have primer and if you plan to directly apply paint, you will end up in much of much of absorption of the good quality paint. So, you can put a layer of glue and if it is damped surface, continuously damped surface, say some water outlets or areas which is under water. So, it is, if it is expected that the facade will be wet, wall will be wet, you can put a initial coat of paraffin, benzoline and resin in the proportion given and that will actually save your paint layer. So, paint is not only protecting, it is also adding aesthetic value. So, even if it is a damped surface and people want, uh, you want to cover up the damp, you have to take proper measures. Otherwise, the paint layer you put it, it will come out because of the damp and then it will become an ugly picture. Similarly, for old surfaces, we have to be very careful. Why? Because old surface it is already painted and now you are repainting it. So, first point is you have to remove the old paint. How? By means of brush. You can by means of emery paper, by means of brush, you have to take out the patches which are still present. Maybe it is in a very poor dull condition, you have to take it out or scratch it out from the substrate. So, that will be the first step of painting any old surface which was painted. Other than that you have to take care if there is any efflorescence, if there are any patches, chalky substances, organic growths, you have to clear off them and then you have to wash the entire wall surface and wait till dry. Any kind of defects, cracks in plasters etc. should be corrected before applying paints, otherwise those will become the vulnerable points. So, before painting, it takes a few days to actually do these dressings. Coming to metal surfaces, we are much concerned when it is ferrous metal. As we had discussed, aluminum does not need a paint. Why? Because of the oxide layer formed on top of it, which is self protective. Unless you need to give a color, you do not need to paint aluminum. But metal 
we have to paint uh, ferrous metal we have to paint it even if it is new the oxidation process starts so it is always better to clear off with emery paper and free it from any kind of oxide form formed in which is a very gradual process if not done the paint will start flaking off be it a old surface or a new surface next is particularly if it is if it is catching some oil or greasy items it has to be cleaned with petroleum or alkaline solutions like sodium bicarbonate sodium hydroxide and immediately after removing this you have to apply primer on top of it once primer is added it is ready to take any enamel paint on over it for new wood surfaces again i reiterate it has to be dry clean seasoned wood and any kind of because it is organic any kind of knots any kind of rotten areas are to be taken off if it is possible you can take it off or you have to treat it with hot lime if you are not treating it the internal sap or the resin from the inside will come out and will damage the finish from these knots so it is very important that the primers before applying the primers such kind of pores knots are to be filled and usually varnish or melamine coats are applied in three coats only after each layer drying each layer drying in case of old wood surfaces the earlier coat has to be removed sand paper which is or emery paper you may must have seen or have heard is the best way to take off the earlier layer oil greasy surfaces are to be washed by soap solution and then after drying the new coats are to be applied now another important point in case of all the paints paints may look that they are very thick it may always tempt a workman to add some water into it or some solvent or thinner into it but this is a time dependent dependent property which is called thixotrophy which makes you feel that the paint is solid solidified but once you churn it you give dynamics into it dynamism into it it becomes viscous the thick fluid becomes much workable this property is called thixotrophy which a workman is supposed to know and hence paint should be applied with right consistency so that you get maximum coverage with maximum hiding power etc coming to some special paints we have already discussed aluminium paint ground aluminium or metal aluminium mixed into the solvent mixed into spirit and applied onto metal surfaces anti corrosive paint chromium oxide lead red or lead red oxide zinc chrome lead is not used nowadays are used to form the anti corrosive paint 
these are also applied onto metal surfaces. We have asbestos paint also this is unhealthy and being getting obsolete day by day. They have asbestos fiber which was initially once I mentioned for textured paint. Here I mentioned for fire resistance, but nowadays this paint is getting obsolete. Bituminous paint, if you remember when we covered bitumen in damp proofing, there we discussed it. It is bituminous material suspended in petroleum, oil or petroleum which is used for substructures or underwater structures. We have cellulose paints where cellulose is the forms the base, it is plant obtained from plant and it hardens by evaporation and not by forming oxide. So, this is a different kind of paint, very limited application in buildings, but yes cellulose paint is also one such. Now let us come to few nano applications of paint. You can see the word intuminescent paint. Intuminescent means it swells. What happens when the fire, if you see this picture, when the fire is touching the metal surface, this black intuminescent paint, the color black here, is expanding and not allowing the fire to touch. It is nano silica in the paint. A thin film of 0.25 millimeter, maximum 5 millimeter on metal on steel structures, actually these are painted to keep it off from fire. It can prevent or give support to the steel structure for 4 hours. The dry film thickness swells on hydration under the condition of heat and temperature and hence the fire spread or the damage to the main structure can be restricted and by that time the fire protection can be done. Other two applications, nano applications are applications of micros microscopic ceramic balls in rubber or ethyl cellulose as the suspended binder. This can be using, used for thermal insulation. Men W, it is self healing paint. Say some portion has got damaged or there is a scratch. Some balls will come out or come rolling rubber balls. Polyurethane dispersion, the rubber balls will come and hide or cover that scratch or correct that scratch. It will seal that area that is also called gap closing or crack sealing paint. The commercial name is MEN W or MEN MW. So, it is mending itself self healing. Thermo S it is ceramic balls which is preventing it from uh, fire insulation, uh, thermal insulation. Walls, pipes, tanks which are exposed to high temperature differences. So, you are applying such kind of things there. So, everything has are explored in building industry. So, these applications are very limited as we had seen nano applications on glass self self cleaning glass, it is self healing paint strength gains etcetera we had discussed in the last module. So, lot of research is being done in each of the 
material domain. So you as architects, you have to keep yourself updated with the new materials coming in, what kind of building it is applied. Yes, these are not applied every day, not applied in all buildings every time, but you must have the knowledge or the base that what is to be recommended where for which particular context and what are you going to gain out of it. Thank you.